Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is Planet Mercury. Today we're going to be talking about this new research that came out very recently, suggesting that the ice that's hiding in various craters on Mercury may actually be formed, unusually, by the extreme heats from the Sun. Which sounds really counterintuitive, so let's talk a little bit more about how all of this happens and welcome to the Math. So all of this mystery of course starts, um, well, technically almost a decade ago. This is the so-called messenger mission that was launched by NASA, I believe in 2004, and it was only finished approximately 5 years ago in 2015. This probe actually ended the mission by colliding with Mercury um, in order to measure certain properties of the surface. But during its mission it also discovered something really unusual about this planet. While orbiting over the polar regions, it discovered that there were a lot of deposits of various types of water ice. Basically, the hottest or one of the hottest objects in the solar system, with the daytime temperatures right here reaching up to about 400 degrees Celsius or about 750 Fahrenheit, surprisingly had quite a lot of water ice, which can only be formed in really cold conditions. But not surprisingly, all of this ice was only hidden in really dark and really cold places, and there were actually regions on Mercury that never received any sunlight. Most of these regions are in the polar caps, so these regions right here that orbit in such a way that they never receive any sunlight at all. And every crater here, for the most part, contains quite a lot of water ice, quite hidden and quite well preserved. And for the most part, we actually thought that most of it was formed through the continuous action of various impactors, basically asteroids and comets, that very likely delivered water and a lot of other com organic compounds to various objects in the solar system. This of course includes um, objects like Earth and objects like the Moon, Venus and so on. And so here, the typical impact would generate just enough energy for all of this to create enough water molecules which would then slowly fall back to the surface and those molecules that basically get stuck inside the craters would probably be hidden from the um, sunlight and thus stay as ice forever. Or I guess until something happens to this planet. But the thing is, if you were to compare our own moon to Mercury, which surprisingly actually looks really similar, especially if you look at some of the more realistic of pictures of both the moon and the Mercury, it does actually create a bit of a problem here. For some reason, our own moon doesn't seem to contain as much ice in its polar regions as Mercury does. So we think that our own moon does have some ice, so very likely in similar regions, polar regions that never really experience any sunlight, but we haven't been able to find as much as there is on Mercury. And this mystery has not really been resolved until very recently. So the study that I'm going to be talking about today, that as always you can find in the description below, decided to investigate if there was any way for water to be formed, well technically similar to how sometimes we form it here on Earth in various lab conditions. In a nutshell, under certain conditions, the surface of the Moon and technically Mercury can actually start creating its own water naturally if enough heat is applied to the surface. But for these molecules to form, which you see right here, these are the so-called hydroxyl molecules, or hydroxyl radicals or hydroxyl ions as they're also known, with the basic formula of HO, something else needs to happen to the surface of the rock before they can start depositing these really thin layers on the surface. And this something comes from the sun. Essentially, the scientists behind the study believe that as the sun bombards the surface of Mercury, and essentially as the extreme heat is generated, a lot of reactions happen on the surface. Starting with the fact that the highly charged solar winds, which usually contain quite a lot of different charged protons, as they strike the surface of Mercury, start generating these hydroxyl molecules which then get deposited pretty much everywhere on the surface of Mercury where there is enough radiation from the Sun. And all of this heat will then start stripping off these hydroxyl molecules, which create these really large tornado-like formations that start moving around Mercury, with some particles obviously escaping the planet, but some depositing in various regions on Mercury's surface, with many of these regions of course being craters and some of these craters will never see sunlight for millions or possibly even billions of years. So essentially, the heat from the sun is thus responsible for generating a lot more ice water than would be there otherwise from all of the meteorite and comet strikes. 
And this obviously also explains why Mercury seems to have so much more of this water ice in its polar regions than our own satellite the Moon, which doesn't seem to have as much or barely any, or at least nothing major we've discovered so far. So in other words, it's really these extreme conditions coming from being so close to the Sun that seem to generate such large amounts of water that we've detected with the messenger mission that we don't seem to find anywhere on the Moon. And the scientists behind this paper also estimated that around 10% of all of the water ice on Mercury is probably produced in this way, whereas the other ice probably came from asteroids and meteorites. But discovering the fact that Sun seems to generate so many different water molecules with these really extreme conditions is actually very useful for us. Because now we can kind of use this science and this chemistry to try to find a way to generate water relatively easily by actually doing very similar things here on the Moon. Now, we might not get as much heat and as much radiation, but there are ways for us to actually amplify the effects by, for example, installing various mirrors and then pointing them at a certain location on the Moon. Or use something very similar to this to produce a lot of water for the upcoming Artemis mission that's going to be launched in the next decade or so. And since the surface of the Moon already probably has a lot of these hydroxyl molecules on the surface as well, from basically being constantly bombarded by the Sun, all we're missing now is a lot of heat. Specifically about 200 degrees Celsius, which would then release these hydroxyl molecules, allowing us to very easily create lots of water relatively quick. And although the current estimate for Mercury suggests that approximately 11 billion tons of water was created this way, it's quite possible that by using the similar technique on the Moon, we might be able to achieve just as much. We might be able to produce quite a lot of water to supply various missions in the future. At the same time, discovering this unusual phenomenon on Mercury may also explain how so many various asteroids and various comets have also acquired so much various water molecules on their surface. Because by being bombarded with various protons and eventually converting them to hydroxyl molecules, which then sublimate and turn into water, this could obviously with time enrich all of the asteroids and comets with all of the water we're seeing on them. In other words, this unusual chemical reaction could have produced a lot of, if not most of the water in the solar system. Although this of course needs to be verified in some of the future studies. Nevertheless, this is a really interesting discovery and will definitely serve us well once we decide to finally settle on the moon. But just the idea of generating ice with really extreme heats coming from the sun is actually kind of mind-blowing. Because, I mean, honestly, nobody ever thought that this would be a thing happening on Mercury and something that could even be happening here on the Moon. Anyway, on that note, once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.